Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the HJC Arthur 90S flip front helmet. If you like the convenience of a flip front helmet, but you're not so keen on the extra weight and size that's normally associated with a helmet like that, then you should probably keep watching this video. The Arthur 90 s is one of the lightest flip front helmets we've weighed to date, with this size medium helmet weighing in on our scales at 1585 grams. It's also been designed to be compact, which in my opinion it manages to do quite nicely. The shell for the helmet portion, the bit that protects your head rather than your chin, is made from HJC's PIM Plus material, that stands for Premium Integrated Matrix, and it's the same composite of fibres used in their sports and racing helmets. The chin bar at the front, like most flip front helmets, is made from plastic, but it doesn't mean that the helmet's heavy. At 1585 grams, that's still actually really impressive. The chin bar on this helmet lifts on a single release button at the base of the chin bar just here, and then on the final step, it sets into a semi-locked position. That means the chin bar won't easily slip down of its own accord and then hinder or block your view of the road ahead. The Arthur 90 s is dual homologated under the road safety standard, which means you can legally ride with the chin bar up or down. Often on a dual homologated helmet like this, there's a switch or a lever somewhere that you need to operate to lock the chin bar in the raised position, but this helmet does it automatically as long as you lift that chin bar all the way to the top. On that chin bar, you'll find one of three large vents that this helmet has. It's an easy to use slider on the chin bar here, and that allows air to flow through the chin bar and then out through the top just here. Up top, there's a chunky slider that exposes two holes leading down to the interior of the helmet. So air flows in through there and then can circulate through channels in the impact liner and then exit through this twin outlet exhaust vent at the back. The exhaust vent on this helmet is switchable, so if you want air to circulate through the helmet completely, you'll need to make sure that that vent is open. The visor is quick release on this helmet and it's so easy to change, it makes the ABC feel like complex algebra. It lifts and lowers as well with the same tab as other helmets in HJC's Arthur series of helmets. It sits in the middle of the visor here and has a two-stage lock. You rest the visor against the lip and then give it an extra push to get the first stage of locking. So if you've got it locked like that, then lifting the lower portion of this mechanism, pinching those two together will release it. And it allows you to either fully raise the visor or just leave it open by a small gap to allow a little bit of airflow underneath. To get the second stage of locking, this small slider moves across here and that disables this opening mechanism. There's no way that visor now will come undone of its own accord. The problem with this, as I've personally experienced quite a few times, is that sometimes you slide that little piece across there without realizing you've done it. If you do that when the visor's closed, then you've effectively locked yourself in behind that visor and not really sure why it's happened. So it's worth practicing with that little tab. And then if you ever do find yourself in that position, you'll know exactly what you need to do to get out of it rather than getting a bit flustered. On the inside of the visor, there's a Pinlock 120 insert. That's Pinlock's most fog resistant option and it's max vision. So you know you'll get minimum interruption to your point of view. That's backed by a sun visor that operates on this switch on the left side of the helmet. And then the final step when you move it back up locks it in place to stop it slipping back into your line of sight. That sun visor is anti-mist coated. That works really well in my opinion. And I think that's an essential when we're talking about a helmet of this price. This helmet costs from £420 up to £460 at the moment, depending on the paint scheme. So it's important that you get features like that anti-mist sun visor in my opinion. The quality of the interior for this helmet also lives up to the price tag. It's luxurious and it has a real high quality feel. It's got a sports style moisture management arrangement going on, yet it still feels very soft against the skin. It's fully removable and it's also been designed to minimise wind noise. When you pull the ends of the chin strap together, these flaps here extend and that creates an improved wind seal around your neck. Uh, those straps also feed through holes in these cheek pads and those holes are zipped so they only need to be just big enough for the straps to fit through, which also means less wind noise. There's a two-part wind curtain as well, just around the front that excludes drafts and the second part of that can be removed really easily if you do actually want a little bit more airflow. There are recesses for intercom speakers in this helmet and they come filled with foam inserts as standard which gives you even more sound insulation if you're riding without the comms. And there's also an accessory wind curtain included in the box. That clips in behind the neck roll back here and then it attaches by Velcro to the cheek pads to give you even more protection from noise. 
I can't say this helmet will be quiet in all circumstances, we never can, as wind noise is always dictated by a range of different factors. But I tested this helmet on a Yamaha Tracer 9 GT, which has a big touring screen fitted to it, and this lid was eerily quiet. I also tried it on my own Yamaha FZ1 Phaser, and again it was quiet, although not quite to the same degree as it had been on the Tracer. Of the 14 customer reviews we've had posted so far for this helmet, no one amongst them has criticised the noise levels at all, which is really rare, and there's one couple within there who've both got one of these helmets and they say it's the quietest helmet they've ever had. So going back to those intercom recesses and intercoms in general, this helmet's been designed with HJC's smart intercom system in mind. This cavity behind the neck houses a battery and then the control unit attaches to the side of the helmet behind the sun visor switch here. There are two units available to integrate with this helmet which are both made by Senna for HJC. Cardo also make an intercom that's been designed to fit with this setup although we're told by the UK importer for HJC that that system isn't an official HJC approved system. I fitted a Cardo PackTalk Bold Universal Intercom to this helmet and it was fine, although I did have to mount the control unit a little bit further back than normal to avoid that sun visor switch. The final but really important detail about the Alpha 90S interior is that it runs a micrometric buckle strap fastener rather than D-rings. So normally that would be completely expected of a flip front helmet for it to have micrometric strap, but there are a few customer reviewers for this lid who say they would have preferred D-rings, which I'm guessing is because this helmet sold as a sporty flip front, appeals to sporty riders who would much rather have a D-ring fastener, but you get the micrometric fastener. It's a bit different to many micrometric systems in the way it operates. It's got a button rather than a lever, so you push that in, which opens it, and then this stainless steel clasp comes out and it gives that a really high quality feel and action. So finally let's talk about sizing and approvals for this helmet. The Arthur 90S is available in sizes triple extra small to double extra large. There are three shell sizes to cover those. The first shell covers helmet sizes triple extra small to small, the middle one covers medium and large and then the biggest shell is for XL and double XL helmet sizes. It's approved to ECE 2205 for the road in dual homologation form as I said earlier. So it's approved as a full face with the chin bar closed and as an open face with the chin bar fully raised. It might be sporty but it doesn't go as far as being approved by the ACU for track and racing use but then again very few people would want to use a flip front helmet for that purpose anyway. The Arthur 90S hasn't been tested by the UK government's SHARP scheme as we record this video so at the moment I can't tell you how well it would do in their impact tests. What I can say is that all five helmets from the Arthur series that have been tested so far in SHARP score three stars. It's always been the score in the impact on the sides of the helmet that have brought those overall star ratings down. The Arthur helmets are quite narrow and this one has that same appearance as those other lids that have been tested by Sharp. Overall, from my own perspective, I liked wearing this helmet a lot. I found it very comfortable, light and really quiet on the bikes that I rode. It's got a much more compact and sporty style than most flip front helmets and I think it brings something different to the other options that are out there already. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the HJC Arthur 90S helmet. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.